Thank you everyone for joining us and welcome uh, to today's webinar. We're here today to discuss cybersecurity automation together with ComSec's very own global VP, Joseph Soren, alongside a number of other cybersecurity industry experts, um, including Peter Zimmer, Rob Reinders, Yori Barbir, and Sergey Penchuk, who is also CTO at ComSec. So thank you guys all very much for being here today. Um, I'm looking forward to a really great discussion. Uh, we'll start our webinar with a brief introduction from Joseph Soren on cybersecurity automation, and then our panelists will each get a chance to briefly introduce themselves. Afterwards, we'll get into a bit of a deeper discussion on everything related to automation, including its challenges and solutions. As usual, we'll leave about 30 minutes at the end of our discussion for uh, Q&A. So if you have any questions throughout, feel free to drop them below in the Q&A section. And if you can't find it, it's okay. You can put it in the chat. We'll see it there too. Um, you can also privately message any of our panelists. I'm sure that they're happy to respond. Um, now, we have an impressive lineup of panelists today, and I'm excited to have them introduce themselves to you. But first, we'll begin with a few words from Joseph Soren, Global VP of ComSec, before we hand off the mic for introductions. Joseph? Thank you, Tony. Well, a warm welcome, and everybody on the call, thank you for being here. We truly appreciate that. Um, today, we're discussing one of the hottest topics today in cyber, cyber automation and AI enhanced technologies. And um, as we have been seeing a, a perfect storm rising, and, and we see an increased number of attacks and very advanced automated platforms on the attacking side, um, we, we, we also are confronted with a huge number of expertise and staff shortages across the globe. This is a hot topic to discuss today and we wanna you know, have a brain share together to, um, to, to share experiences, visions, have a very open and a very, um, a very good discussion today about this. Um, so anything you can add to that discussion, please uh, share as Journey invited you. And I'm very proud and, 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 and happy to see uh, some good friends here on the call that uh, come from customers, from partners that we do business with, and uh, I'm very pleased to, uh, to, to give the mic back to Sterling to have them introduced. Thank you. Thank you, Joseph. Um, we're really glad that you brought us together today and um, that we could be here. Um, I'd just like to take a few minutes before we jump into the discussion to do a quick introduction round. So starting with Peter, would you mind giving our listeners maybe a bit of background on yourself and your field of expertise? Yes, hello, my name is Peter Zimmer. I'm the Vice President for IT Service Quality Management, as well as the appointed Information Security Officer of uh, Viper Acoustic. We are 100% automotive supplier and we have a global footprint as uh, most of the automotives. Uh, we speak about uh, around 5,000 um, accounts and we are active in uh, 18 countries approximately. And um, the field of um, IT service quality management is not a standardized field, so it consists of the uh, ITIL part uh, or ITIL process group, uh, which is called CSI, Continuous Service Improvement, as well as the risk management, the performance management of COVID, as well as information security and data protection. Um, my field of expertise, I'm, very, I'm coming very strongly from the information security part. Um, so I've been CISO since, well, I have to calculate, 12 years, 13 years approximately. And um, we started very early with the cloud migration. I saw a question in the chat uh, about hybrid environments. I'm very interested for that discussion here. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Peter. We're really glad that you could join us. Um, Rob, you're next. Yes, uh, thank you. So my name is Rob Reinders. Um, I'm the Global Director of Information Risk and Security within Frieser Capina and also assuming the CISO role for our company. Uh, Frieser Capina is a global dairy company. Uh, we operate in many countries in Asia, Africa, and of course also in Europe. Uh, and uh, as you can see, also my background is a, a grasp of the products that we, uh, that we have uh, around the globe. Uh, as said, a global company, so also the complexity of a, a global company and also the challenges that brings that forward for a CISO uh, to operate in that. Um, as a part from my, from my background, I've uh, been an IT security and a consultant and auditor for many years at KPMG. And when I joined Frieser Capina, I assumed many roles, uh, amongst others, uh, setting up the IT audit department, uh, leading the finance and PMO for uh, a global SAP rollout, 
and my last role before I became a CISO, I was responsible for a, a cost cutting program within a company. So it's something completely different, but it also gives me a lot of expertise and background uh, about the company and operating in this role. Awesome. Thank you, Rob. We're glad that you could join us. Um, Yuri? Hi, glad, uh, glad to have joined this. And uh, thanks, of course, for the invitation. Uh, Yuri Barbier, um, global CISO for, uh, for G-Tronix, um, meaning that, first of all, global is really global. So we, we span the whole world. Um, and next to that, of course, um, running different different the different teams, both internally looking looking at security, but also for our customers, um, also externally, uh, publicly facing, you know, what, what we do in, in, in the cloud area, you know, private cloud, public cloud, and so on. So um, yeah, it's quite a spans quite a wide area, um, but at the same time, I'm. Uh, one of those lucky guys who, who also have has quite a good and, and, and wide and strong team behind us. So uh... thanks for joining, Gary. And lastly, we have Sergey Panchuk. Uh, hello, uh, pleasure to be here uh, with the team of uh, experts. Uh, so I'm Sergey, Sergey Panchuk. Um, I'm a city at Comsec, uh, which is a hub, hub security company. Uh, I do uh, cybersecurity for over 15 years, so uh, it's quite a lot of time. And I was doing it uh, since, since I um, uh, joined uh, my, my military service uh, for uh, quite uh, many years. And this is how I started my uh, cyber career, okay? And uh, I worked for Comsec over 10 years uh, as a consultant uh, in all possible uh, types of uh, cyber domains like uh, infrastructure security, um, application security, offensive security, infrastructure security, uh, uh, incident response, uh, compliance, uh, all of the things. Um, and today I link the company from the uh, professional perspective, okay, to see what is in the future. And the automation is part of this uh, future. That's why we, have, we are here to talk about it. Um, uh, glad to be here. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you, Sergey. So we're gonna jump into today's discussion. And um, I've already mentioned a few times, but we'd really like if you guys engage with us when we get to Q&A, which is following this. Um, so please, 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 if you have questions, there's no, there's no such thing as a stupid question. If you have a question, probably someone else has it as well. So feel free to drop it in the chat or in the Q&A, and um, we're gonna try to get to them um, at the end. So today's discussion um, is going to be divided into three topics. We're gonna to start um, with topic one, which is sort of just an overview or an introduction um, to the topic of uh, automation and cybersecurity. Um, and in the second topic, we'll talk more about the challenges and risks. Um, some of the CISOs on the panel will share uh, from their perspective, the experiences they've had and the challenges they've faced. Um, before we go into the last topic, which is approaches and solutions. Um, so we'll talk about maybe um, some ways that they've uh, found, uh, they've, they've dealt with some of the challenges that they've faced, um, as well as maybe some tips and insights um, for organizations looking to start off on their automation journey. So just to start us off, Joseph, since it was your idea to conduct, conduct a webinar around this topic um, of cyber automation, maybe you could share with us a little bit about um, what drove this decision and just your desire to organize an event like this. Yeah, happy to. Um, well, actually, it stems from a while ago when, uh, when I started working with Sergey and, and, and some of the requests that we received out of the field of our customers and the challenges that they faced. Um, as, as I previously mentioned, right, in, 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 there are a couple of things feeding this requirement in the market and the growth of that requirement uh, quite steeply. And that is, you know, expertise doing everything by hand while the other side is doing everything automated very very advanced. So we need to fight fire with fire. And looking at the request that, that we received, can you automate what you do as well? Can you look into you know, improving uh, the, the constant quality by automation, enhancing by uh, AI injected technologies? And, and this was a, a journey that we took as a company from morphing from a consulting firm all the way to a product automation firm which we are going into now. And that is, um, that is only underlining 
um, how important this is uh, to us and also to our customers. So this is why I thought it would be a great idea and a great momentum now with, with this, this rise of attacks everywhere um, to, to have a, a share of thought and, and an open discussion with some uh, friends and experts and also with, of course, the, the visitors to this call and try to answer as many questions as possible. Great. So, so maybe you can start us off, right, as a CISO of a financial company who makes its own software for internal use. Maybe you can share with our audience some of the benefits um, that automation has brought um, to you and your team and um, just generally when it comes to securing critical business applications generally across the board. So, sorry, I was on uh, mute. So how, how we see it as, as one of the main, yeah, there are lots of benefits, of course, to automation, but one of the main benefits um, that we see is also consolidating different security tools, right? I think everybody knows that in every company, there are, there are dozens, dozens of security tools, security solutions. I think everybody on this call, participants as well, realize that very well. Yeah? As often said, today there, there's not really that, that one silver bullet um, as a solution. Yeah? Um, so from that is actually one is consolidating, but, but two is also actually making those tools, yeah, working, working better together from an automation perspective. So if you, if you automate, right, I'm just going to give some examples, right? You, you, you know, as we have also our own, our own SOC security operations center, you have, you have SIEM tools, you have threat intelligence services, you have, you know, endpoint security solutions, many, many solutions out there to protect, to detect, and so on. Now, these tools are, are typically, yeah, are they designed to work together in an ideal world? Yes, but probably they are not. Some will be, yeah, there are known integrations, but others will not, yeah. So that's where, where actually we saw, um, and we are seeing um, the, the biggest benefit is that you can actually bring a lot together. One is creating this holistic overview with actually going automating and giving you back that, that, that overview and that insight, which you would otherwise lack from working with all different solutions and reporting and, 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 and dashboards. Um, with doing that, you get a lot of more efficiency. Yeah. Um, so for for you, for your own teams, yeah, internally, I just, yeah, we see that, but but also towards customers, towards your partners, towards your towards your vendors, because you get much more detailed insight in actually how's your security posture, yeah, how how is that looking, um, how does your how does your attack surface look like, yeah, what 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 can you do in in in, in that space? So it brings together, I would say, a much better understanding and visibility as what you would get from all these different individual tools, let's say. Definitely. And what are some of the primary problems? Um, when we just spoke about a few now, but some of the primary problems that cyber automation addresses um, across the board besides um, cyber hygiene? So I think the the if you look at really the overload, yeah, people people are, are getting today, right? Um, that's also that's also one of the issues where hundreds of thousands of alerts, yeah, which 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 come to security analysts, security engineers, yeah, you, you have to deal with it. Yeah. Um, so for most in most cases, people are overwhelmed by these alerts. Yeah while they need to triage, they need to investigate 24 seven, because of course security doesn't stop during, yeah, during night. So it's not a typical work day. So you need to analyze, you need to review, triage and so on. Um, so actually um, putting, putting, putting this together, automating that, it, it, it will create, um, I think, it will create, and it is creating, um, you know, a much more coherent approach, and also will give you much more efficiency. Yeah, which at the same point, if, if you do that, that you will keep up with volume. Yeah, and that I think that is one of the of the yeah 
of the biggest um, um, problems one you see, but problems which which can be can be solved as well. And I think as well, if you put less load on on on, on people, yeah. You will also create much more, I think, motivated staff at the same time. While that is not the goal, of course, of, of, of such a solution, but you will see it that with, with automating, yeah, it takes away that, that you know, maybe the, the sometimes dreary, you know, job of, of going through these things every day again. So, so I think that that's really um, yeah, a, a key a key benefit as well. Um, and one of the key problems that, that you're solving with, with automation as well. Sergey, maybe you can tell us what is the difference between cyber automation and automation in IT generally, or any other domain for that matter? Yeah, thank you for asking me. Uh, so I would say to just, uh, I'll try to give it the title, okay? With IT, we try to achieve, we, we, it's a business enabler, okay? It uh, generates our revenue, okay? And it increase our profits. Cyber, is actually the guard of the IT, is actually guards make sure that uh, this enabler can work, okay? Uh, and it can generate the revenue and it can uh, uh, generate this, uh, this profits eventually. So that's the, that's the, uh, the, the highlight of uh, what the main difference. So basically it also means that uh, with cyber automation, your sensitive, sensitivity uh, level of uh, mistake is much higher because, okay, by doing wrong automation you can, uh, with cyber, you're trying to protect your organization, okay, but it can cause a full denial of service of the organization because you thought that uh, you're under attack, but you're protecting, you're causing, um, um, uh, I mean, legitimate users or legitimate processes uh, to be uh, uh, terminated. Okay, with IT, it's very simpler, but uh, you are you don't have this um, uh, uncertainty that you're under attack and, and you have to make this decision of uh, uh, should I uh, uh, disconnect or shut down my network or application or um, or not. You just you just manage it as an incident because it's uh, uh, it's still important, but you don't have this uh, tough decisions to be uh, to be made. Um, and another, um, another part is that uh, cyber involves a lot uh, with the human, okay? We are trying to guess what attackers, which are human, okay, are going to do. How are they going to attack us, okay? And that's called uh, threat modeling from one side. From the other, from other side, uh, we have this AI capabilities that come in place uh, to help the normal people to, uh, that actually cannot process all this. To, uh, uh, to dozens of data uh, um, uh, to uh, identify or to find this um, uh, uh, weaknesses or this uh, potential threat. So, so basically, this is the main differentiator. And okay, because uh, eventually uh, cyber relies on IT uh, infrastructure, we also benefit uh, have a lot of benefit from IT automation. So basically, we are as a, a cyber professional, cyber automation. Um, uh, enthusiasts, uh, we promote uh, automation in any place, uh, place possible because it's also reduced the, uh, the, the mistakes. Okay, it also allows us uh, to, uh, to make our job in cyber automation detection and response much easier. So basically it's all coming together, but uh, the cost of mistake in cyber is much higher. Definitely, definitely. Um, Peter, as information security officer at Viber Acoustic, why did you guys make the decision to adopt the use of automated cybersecurity and what are some of the benefits that you and your team expected to gain by leveraging it? Yeah, we had, all, oh, <clears throat> thank you. Uh, we heard already a lot about um, the, the automated SOC, SOAR and so on, which was great. Uh, we come from another point or from another starting point uh, here. So we face a growing number of system and a stronger hybrid situation as I mentioned earlier, that we see um, many services are moved to the cloud and it, it's, it's regardless if it's a private or public cloud, these are only buzzwords, um, it doesn't matter. Um, and in parallel, we need to move from the classic security approach by blocking some safe networks or something like that, like Sega mentioned, uh, to a, let's call it a zero trust approach. 
yeah where we can where we see or where we have to move over to uh, asset protection in cloud apps yes a more asset uh, focused uh, cloud or an asset focused security protection here uh, to reach that we need some let's say a minimum security level in a holistic approach so it doesn't make sense that we um, uh, select several systems um, only and they we do that with uh, testing and put them into the, the ZOA and all the stuff and do some pen testing there and whatever. Um, in the end, we trust the cloud providers more and more and we have to trust. And nevertheless, uh, we need uh, quality assurance. Um, let's see, we have especially the, the pen testing is becoming more and more mature. We are now a Pentest partner of Comsec since I think six years or seven years, I'm not sure. Um, and it's becoming more and more mature. And if we have a look into the production and the parts production process here, here we see that quantitative measurements and risk-driven decisions are implemented since decades. Yeah, this is an absolute standard there. And information security or cyber security, it doesn't matter, is exactly on the point where these extraordinary checks and we are so special and, uh, and so on is becoming more and more commodity here. Um, and everything that is commodity um, is tending as good, good qualified, very good qualified to become automated. And this is exactly our approach here. Yeah, um, in the end, um, we need, um, and it is a question, which risks we want to leverage at which cost? And this is not our decision. This is a decision by the executive managers. This is what are they, they are getting paid for. So bring us, let us as a CISO, bring them into a position that they can do their jobs in terms of cybersecurity so that they can decide. And we go away from, I call them emotional arguments, like we want to be better and here and there and there. Um, to a situation that we can say, okay, we want to leverage the risk from a level of, let's say 10 down to five. And this costs 50,000 euro or whatever, uh, some, 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 uh, some amount of money. And this gives you that benefit. This is the question I've, I've been always asked. So what is the risk you want to address at which cost? And in the end, the executive manager has to decide. Yeah, and he has to live with the result here. And this is our approach here, and this is why we are uh, here, in, um, um, why we want to go for the uh, automation, and we are already in contact here. Definitely, and like Sergey said, right? Um, cyber mistakes are very costly, so um, you have to uh, definitely find a, um, a balance between uh, the risk and uh, the cost. Um, Rob, we'll go to you next. Uh, maybe you can share with us some of um, the benefits that cybersecurity automation has had on an agricultural conglomerate like Friesland Campina. Yes, uh, thank you. And uh, I want to react also on Peter's comment on the risk. So, because I, I think that I totally hear what you're saying and I totally recognize that also in my own uh, environment. We want to bring the board into a position that they can make the kind of decisions. But how to close the gap? If I'm going to tell the board, hey, this, uh, you should do this and this measurement or this kind of implementation, they're like, okay, yeah, what is it? Uh, do it. And so it's like, Closing a gap between what is cybersecurity, what do you need to do in cybersecurity, what is the business risk that is associated with, with, with that. And that also ties back a little bit in what I would uh, the answer to your question. In Spisa Capina, we have, we have IT and OT. We have IT, we have office people, we have people with laptops, people uh, like, I think the most of the people that are on this call having a laptop, maybe probably working from home at this moment in the whole COVID situation. Uh, but in Spisa Capina, we even have more people working in factories. And factories has a whole different ball game if you look at uh, IT, especially security. Uh, I cannot go around there and saying, "Hey guys, you need to patch your system. Uh, can you please shut down the factory the coming weekend because we need to patch the system?" They're like, "Okay, what the hell? Sorry for the word." But they're like, <laughs> "We want to keep this uh, this operation going, and with the least amount of people as uh, possible." So uh, also having the right people on the floor, knowing about security, knowing which measures they need to take, is very scarce. Uh, capability of security in the factories uh, is actually non-existent. So having the right tooling or measures in place that can automate that is very important. Um, I have not found the silver bullet yet. I have also have to be very uh, honest about that, but it's really something that I'm looking for. Uh, as in the office environment, um, um, I'm trying to work with as much as possible the same uh, parties, uh, maybe also to the point of, of Yuri, let's not trying to gather as many security products as possible in one environment, trying to all test them all together and see what that looks like. So my philosophy is like working 
with one and the same par partner with a product that, that is um, matched uh, to other parts of the product. And therefore also in every release knows how to, to talk with, uh, with the other part of the product, delivering me the right information and data on security, uh, making sure that I can, step, can get steps. Big challenge for me is the how to involve also the OT environment, uh, let alone also the third parties mm -hmm. that are involved in the very complex structure that we have in our company. Fascinating. And I, I hope we're going to get into it because right now we're going to move to our second topic, which is the challenges and risks around cybersecurity automation. And um, Joseph, I'm going to start off with you. When organizations first consider adopting uh, cyber automation tools, what are some of the areas they should take into consideration um, before setting off on their journey? Yeah. Well, well, of course, you know, you see the, the, the layers of cyber that everybody is implementing and all the tooling everybody is implementing and all the monitoring tooling, the vulnerability management tooling, you know, all, all, all these, these segments that we all have here, SIM, you know, uh, SOX, all these things. Um, and in each and every one of them, it has, become, it has become more and more important to have these automated systems talk to each other and with each other. So that is probably to Yuri's statements and also to, to Rob's statement, very, very important that you have this oversight. That is, I think, um, the data, getting the data is one, but, but knowing what to do about the data is, is, is absolutely crucial to get that decision done as fast as possible. Um, and so this is more the, the standard architecture. Okay, what do we need to look at and, and where can we automate? One big thing also mentioned today by Peter is the testing of it all. Because again, we have a force of point solutions that we see. And we, we, we come in, in a lot of customer environments, right? We, we see a whole um, mix of different situations. And this forest of tooling does, is not, not always uh, very secure. Uh, although the third parties will want to believe you, they are absolutely secure. Or you have third party software, or you have APIs in your, in your, in your systems. And all of that is not really tested well. It is just checked by what the vendor is stating. And I believe there is a huge opportunity to, to, to get automated platforms in place and, and, a, and a more rigid boarding mechanism to really test those critical assets, test those critical applications, test those APIs, and make sure that whatever the vendor is selling you is actually truly secure. And this is where we also have a lot of investment in automating automated testing platforms. Um, and at the same time, this also saves us a lot of manpower, right? Where we normally would do a test in, in, in 10, 15 days uh, with automation, you could do it in a couple of days and get to the same result. And to Yuri's earlier statement, our consultants are super excited because the, 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 the repetitive, repetitive, repetitive work that you would normally do to prepare automated. So they only go after with their expertise, the real reports, the real findings, the real important data. So that's that's where I think there are a couple of areas that are really important. Definitely, and and uh, you know the saying, the most vulnerable endpoint is <laughs> is a uh, is a human error, right? Um, so it definitely plays a big role in that. Um, Peter, in your opinion, what are some of the prerequisites that need to be fulfilled by organizations before they start integrating and operating um, automated cybersecurity uh, within their organization? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Thank you for the question. So um, it is clear that uh, automated cybersecurity produces uh, events as well as findings. That is clear, uh, regardless, or it doesn't matter how high quality they are. Um, in the end, they have to be processed somehow. Um, and they have to be prioritized, aggregated, and correct. That's, that's, a, that's a simple fact, yes? Um, the thing is, the, the CISO or the, the security organization has to have a way how they're getting uh, corrected or executed in the end. Yeah? For that, um, we must um, ad identify and uh, qualify the risk in a quantitative way. This is what I mentioned in my earlier statement already. Um, and if we have a finding, for example, in a pen test, which produces cost in the end, we need to, to say it again, enable the executive management um, to make an approval here because they have to pay in the end. Yeah? And in the uh, strongly cost-driven environments, you have a, 
the thing is, um, if you have only qualitative risks, then um, you will, uh, I called them emotional earlier, uh, they are not, normally not being accepted. This is my uh, experience here. So, um, and we need to stop here that we um, ransom our executives, that we say, if you do not give me the money for that, you will have a big impact in this and this and this and millions and whatever. Um, we need to come down in a, a situation that we will be able to to give them a, some euro or some money um, on, on, the, on the risk there and uh, um, a starting level and a, um, a target level if they do something here. Um, we need to accept that the standard production processes to come back to that again are much more security, uh, I'm sure, uh, sorry, much more mature than the ones in the information security for handling that, for uh, optimization, risk optimization and, and so on. Um, and we are, we are children, we are small children in a world of adults and trying to play the same processes as in a production process or in the production area where they have experience for 30 or 40 or 50 years, yes? Um, the production processes where we earn the money with, uh, they are still the same, they get more digitized. That's, a, that's also a fact, we see that all. I think Rob, you said you, has, you, said a, you gave a similar statement, you have a raising rate of um, industry 4.0 or whatever, however you call it there. And then um, the same principles and the processes apply. And we have to adopt them. And in the end, we need a good uh, link to the living IT organization to become um, or to make the, the changes or to execute the changes that we need based on the findings to correct the systems here, yes? Um, if you have a demand or a change management process, it doesn't matter. The CISO has to be the opt, or has to be the possibility that he can trigger it and follow it up and get the uh, respective executive, executive decisions here. And in the end, get the money, not himself, but the IT organization has to execute it in the end and to operate the systems. We as a CISO, are not responsible for operating anything with an IT or OT or whatever. Yes, we have to check it. We have to force the checks. We have with partners like Comsec or Hub Security, it doesn't matter. We produce findings, we produce events, and the IT has to live with it. And they have to correct it and have to process it and so on. And so we need a strong link here. So um, this is what we need. So in, in total, we need a good and stable um, process. Uh, demand management, change management in the IT. And the second one is we need to um, accept that the production um, is working like it is. And we are not, in my eyes, not allowed to say, hey, you're doing something wrong here in the, in the production. No, we earn, they earn our income here in the end, so our salary. And uh, we have to be a service provider for them. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Uh, Thank sorry, you, Peter. I would like to emphasize, uh, uh, Peter. Sorry, uh, sorry that I'm uh, uh, injecting here. Just uh, Peter said the really important things. Uh, uh, cyber or CISO is actually the advisor for uh, the board, for the management, uh, what and how uh, they should do. So basically, it should give the tools, okay, uh, to for, uh, qu qu qualified tools to make a, qu a quality decision. Okay, and uh, not to prevent uh, from business to run. Okay, and this is a, a, something that CISOs or cybersecurity uh, is changing now. Okay, we are enablers. Okay, we enable the business uh, to run. Sorry. <laughs> no, great. Uh, thank you for that, Sergey. Um, Rob, as CISO of Friesland Campina, which is, I don't know, for those who haven't done a Google search, the fourth largest dairy. Um, distributor in the world, what are what are some of the biggest challenges that you're facing when it comes to um, cyber automation process? And you spoke about the difference, right, between the IT and, the o and OT. Maybe you can expand a little bit on that for us. Yeah, if I look at my biggest challenges, actually, overall, uh, I always say you have, I have three challenges, which is people, people, and people. So it's the people in my team, <laughs> making sure that they stay. <laughs> Making sure that I do not have to hire new people every time. It's it's a very aggressive market. There's no, I think you all can uh, agree with me on that. It's the people that I have to work with, the people in IT, the people in OT that have have to have the knowledge to do so, to uh, to make sure that we have to speak the same language, and it's the people in the organization uh, hoping hope, uh, hoping that they're not pressing uh, the wrong buttons or links uh, and being aware on that one. So for me, people is uh, is my main uh, concern. 
And yeah, if you tie that to automation, so where we can make life easier for people, I'm always interested in uh, see how we can uh, best do that. Um, and uh, and I, I also hear, uh, of course, where, where tedious work uh, comes across, uh, the checking of events, the actually the, the, the conveyor belt work, that's what to say. Uh, we have to see where we can automate that because that keeps people motivated, keeps people in my team, keeps people in the organization happy enough to also listen to cybersecurity and not think, hey, this is like a dull story. Now I know that I don't have to click that link. I know that by now. So please bring something new. If we can bring that, that level of enthusiasm uh, back on the cybersecurity, I think that will help a lot. Um, again, for me, people is the key and also the, the biggest challenge. Yuri, talking about people and your experience, do you need a full-time team to manage cyber automation processes? Well, that's that's the beauty of this, of course. Um, and and maybe before we go into this, like to what Peter and, and Rob said, I think um, yeah, we all we all can use, I would say it like that, we all can use big extended teams to cover off everything because in the end, what we're trying to do is is we're trying to protect from the unknown, right? So I think that 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 is important. That that's what we need to do: detect, protect, and so on. Now, the beauty of this is we did internally the exercise. Yeah. So, so it was really a question of okay, looking at the timeline, yeah, and making making um, yeah a future proof, let's say, estimation of how we're going to do this. So we saw that. Okay, with onboarding this tool and with um, with doing this and this and this, getting you know onboarding more customers and bo- onboarding more environments, we actually need more people. While actually doing this exercise, you see you come at a certain cutoff where you see if at this point you bring in automation, actually yes, you will still need people to manage it, of course. But first of all, you don't need this big team to cover off everything. You need a small team to manage the automation piece, yes, or team or a few people yeah, to, to, to manage, to configure, to, to set it up in, in, in the right way. Um, and from there, you're, you're actually creating a benefit for yourself, yeah, which, which renders this much more efficient. Yeah? We, we all know within security that I think for the past 20 years, yeah, that there was staff shortage. Uh, there, there were challenges with, with finding the right people. Um, also, we see it um, um, with, within our SOC. Yeah? Um, I think everybody, everybody faces that. But actually, if you can give also the people you know, interesting things to work on, yeah? can give the people some, some challenges, um, and they see as well that things become much more efficiently. I think that that's a huge benefit. And there is, do you need a, to come back to your original question? Do you need a full team? No, you don't. You need a few people to set it up, discuss, for example, with, you know, as a partner with, with, with Comsec and Hub, right? What is the best way to, to do this? What, what is your experience? Yeah, go go into that into that project and actually start start to roll it out and i think you you'll very quickly see the benefits coming back yeah, just, just to, thank you yori just to jump in here for a second if i might turn uh to me um just a use case right also for the listeners the use case itself a huge customer global customer more than eighty thousand uh staff working more than 30 sites now they need to do from a compliance perspective they need to do repetitive testing of applications, infrastructure, critical web assets, all these things. And they build a huge team of of one of 50 people constantly doing these jobs, constantly testing and testing and testing. And then the challenge was brought to us. What can we automate here? How can we do this smarter? How can we do, because these these people first, there's a high rate of, of cyber professionals being bought away or lured away out of your organization. So it's really hard to replace them. So you better retain them. You better give them challenging things to do. Uh, secondly, um, it's, it's, a, it's, a costly, it's a costly exercise. So if you can have these experts do smarter things, 
better things with their time for your organization than the standard stuff. And so we started to automate. And in the end, um, 30 people were still in the group, but they were focusing solely on the, on the reporting, on the, on, the, on the stuff that mattered, the mitigation, the decision-making, right? And what was normally done by 20 people was now done by four. They became operators and they did the automation of the testing platforms. And all the rest of the stuff was then put in a program where they could certify and excel in different areas where the company needed them and still have them on board as cyber experts. So this is just an example how this can work for an organization if you adopt cyber automation as a, as a strategic tool. That's great, thank you. Um, Sergey, when we hear about cyber automation, we often refer to SOAR or security orchestration automation and response, which is a type of solution. Is there anything else in cyber automation that is not SOAR related? Yeah, so it's uh, uh, the SOAR actually includes so many things inside of it. So it's really hard to find anything that is uh, not SOAR in uh, what we do in cybersecurity, but there is. Okay, but there is uh, some things that we do, still do uh, that actually integrate with the SOAR. Uh, for example, uh, as uh, Rob mentioned, the most important uh, and the, the big challenge and the most important thing is the, the people, okay? But to train the people, it's also an effort that uh, has to be, uh, has to be um, uh, invested in the organization. And it can be done uh, uh, in traditional way by just uh, lectures or uh, some other, um, some other uh, let's say, um, uh, co uh, conventional uh, ways to do it, or with some automated tools like um, uh, it can be live video or live um, a simulation of something. So basically, uh, an, a platform that uh, uh, deals with training of people for cybersecurity, which includes not only the, um, uh, the phishing campaigns, which is something that we, uh, 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 we can hear all the time, uh, but also some, uh, some other uh, uh, anecdotes or some other uh, uh, type of uh, activities, how we can uh, educate our people um, uh, for, cyber for cyber security. Um, in general, what we do in cyber, it's uh, three main things. Okay, we define the policy. Usually we as CISOs, we define a policy. Uh, there is a huge um, operational activity. There's a lot of operation, cyber operations. Uh, that uh, includes SOCs, uh, management of the firewalls, uh, installing all the patches based on the policy that was uh, uh, defined by the CISO. And afterwards, there is an audit phase, okay? And it's basically a uh, testing, okay? We want to test how uh, the policy was uh, implemented, by the way, during the audit itself. We also test are the policies are correct, okay? And there's also uh, cycle back to uh, from uh, the audit back to the policy because we want to improve the policies because uh, if we found something. And uh, the, the, uh, the, the main part or the, the, the SOAR usually talks about this uh, middle part of uh, implementation of cybersecurity, not necessarily of the policy automation because right now I, there, is no, there are no solution that will automatically update or at least give you a suggestion how to update your policy in the organization uh, based on the, uh, how, what you have in your organization. Uh, but there, is, uh, there are solutions that uh, do uh, testing, or so basically the audit part, but, uh, like uh, uh, penetration testing, like uh, DDoS testing, like uh, some other type of testing that uh, actually eventually um, uh, integrate to uh, or provide some findings to SOAR. But usually SOAR, is, uh, it's kind of extension of a SOC that if something happens, I will act on it, okay? Uh, with findings, you have to also um, uh, uh, do ex extra job like anal uh, perform an analysis of the finding itself. Do you want to even to fix it, or you want uh, what, what? How exactly you want to fix it? Okay, so basically there is uh, something that is more much more than sore. Great, thank you, Sergey. I wanted to get into our final topic for today before we move on to Q and A. Um, I think we have about forty minutes, so um, let's see how much of it we can get through, and then we can get to some of the questions that our audience has been asking because um, we've gotten quite a few. Um, and another topic, we're going to touch upon approaches and solutions uh, related to cyber automation. And uh, Peter, I'm gonna start with you. What is your approach to integrating automated cybersecurity services 
um, into the current IT and cybersecurity landscape. Mm -hmm. If you have some tips for us. So the, the first key here is clear that you have to deeply integrate cybersecurity in, into the IT operational processes. So you see it in my position. I have a, um, a big role in the, um, in, the, in the CSI part of the operative organization, yeah, as well as a, as, as a cybersecurity officer or, or CISO or however, however you call it. This is to have the direct channel to the guys who are uh, operating the IT services. And we are speaking in a digitized world, world more and more about um, IT components and less about paper or something like that. The second one is you need for each and any service an uh, owner in the business. And this is the key, and most of the companies do not do that. This is really important. So if you have any issues, whatever, whatever it would be uh, a finding or a high rate of attacks or whatever, you need that um, um, manager or owner, let's call it an owner, um, to address it. Because that guy is responsible for the contract with that service partner. Yeah, if it's internal or external, it doesn't matter. Mostly I'm speaking, of course, about cloud services. So uh, that guy has to know uh, if there are issues with the system and he or she has to drive um, the change here yes to um, that um, this is important for the next round of negotiation or whatever with the service um, and please never address too much to the IT guys themselves and um, think that they are driving the change in your um, mission or in your uh, order of course they will do in the end but um, but then they will do something which does not hesitate them yeah, and in the end, the higher quality is if you have always that owner in between. He is responsible, or he or she is responsible for that contract, and is interested in a high performance service here. And that is the the third point here. What you need. And finally, uh, or, or to be honest, you need it in the beginning. You need a full map of the IT services. It sounds ridiculous, but um, yeah, I know many companies who do not have a full uh, full list. Uh, or full register or something like that. Um, and IT business or uh, the business has to rate it according to um, the CIA targets. Yeah, They have to say, how important is that system for me? I know I'm telling you uh, like in the, uh, yeah, uh, like in the, in the, in the books, yeah, this is nothing special, but uh, most of the people, most, most of the companies did not execute it here. Um, and then um, we need, we have also, in all, all companies I know, we have also uh, cloud services or services or systems or whatever, which are not operated by IT, but by the business but directly. And here it is even much more important that you have a direct, um, let's say a contract owner here. And with this, if you have all these stakeholders in place, then do a regular PDCA cycle, and then we are fine. Um, I have to deal with the risk in my role as a CISO and, um, to make that risk transparent to, a, to the executive management, to come to my later, uh, to my earlier statements, um, to, to enable them to decide about budgets and correction measures and whatever, what I already said. So, and as a tool in there, to say it again, you need an extremely powerful demand and change management process. Otherwise, you will get lost in the end. Yeah. Okay. That's great advice. Thank you, Peter. Sergey, what is the first thing that CISO should be doing when beginning the process of implementing cyber automation? And more generally, what are some tips that you'd give to a CISO who is just uh, starting out and is just interested in, um, in starting off on uh, implementing uh, cyber automation within their organization? Yeah, uh, that's a good question. Uh, basically, uh, for any automation project, uh, the, the first thing you would like to do is to first to identify the bottlenecks, okay? What hurts you the most, okay? Uh, you, if you see that your people, the, your valuable people that cost you so much money and so much time to manage them, uh, they're busy with logistics that are not, uh, uh, that are actually not related to your, uh, th their expertise, or they do some, uh, uh, or this, they do some uh, repetitive activities, uh, just automated, okay, identified and automated. So basically it can be just a process, okay, process automation that is, it's not the sophisticated cyber automation. It can be just uh, a repetitive task or just a process that has to be, uh, go in a, uh, in a smooth way. If you can automate it, you can achieve already uh, a, a, 
uh, already a huge improvement in your uh, cyber operations and cyber cyber management of the organization. It can be the auto automation of specific activity that is repetitive. You can just automate it. Uh, but let's say uh, that's the general tip for uh, all kind of automation projects. Uh, uh, but with the cybersecurity, uh, I would definitely will start with operations because the risk, the main risk is there is on operations because if you will not be able to react properly uh, to a threat to an attack, okay, you can uh, you can uh, finish without being uh, without the business, okay. If you're hit by a ransomware or by uh, a threat that uh, will erase your business, uh, it's, it's it's it is something that you should be aware about it. Uh, so operations, monitoring and operations. Uh, if you're a development company. Uh, in embedding automation in your development process will ensure that uh, uh, the product uh, will be much more secure in the end than uh, 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 than without security security uh, activities uh, during the process itself, and that's also also will give your uh, customers much more uh, uh, confidence that uh, they are using much more secure product. Um, eventually, testing. Okay, if uh, you want to, uh, you want to make sure that you are always secure. So you always want to test yourself, uh, not only once once a year. Just uh, because I'm required to by a, by a policy or by a regulation to to perform uh, 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 to perform testing. Um, uh, that would be I would say the the top three uh, activities that uh, I would I would start as a season. Thank you, Sergey. Um, I wanted to next uh, just ask Joseph uh, for organizations you, who are using uh, third party services and applications, which most of them are, what should they consider when it comes to controlling their testing and security processes? Is there anything important for them to take into consideration and to know? Oh, yeah, a lot. Thank you. <laughs> control what you don't control, right? That's kind of summarizing it. Um, it it's, it's a very lively discussion. That, um, that actually I'm having with, with many, many um, CIOs and CISOs today. Um, also, they could, looking at the, the situations that we've seen over the past years, third-party infrastructure is a backdoor that is not in your control. Now, the backdoor that is in your control, you can assess it, you can make decisions, you can decision towards risk and what kind of assets I do or do not secure to a certain level. But things that you use, services that you use, or applications that you buy, or APIs that are being installed, they are not in your control. And uh, so um, I, I think the most important thing there is to have a very, very good boarding program of these applications, that they are tested to a certain level of security, and that they can show this to you. The second, a vendor will tell me, you can only test me in a in a non-real environment, that, that would be an application I would never have a buy. Um, these kind of things, but also when, when you are dealing with the top names out there and they promise you, when you buy our cloud service, you will be secure, test it. We have had several, several examples where we had a huge company with down within four minutes with our automation platform just by double checking and this this is one serving the business with good applications with good services with cloud etc but at the other side also securing and assuring business continuity and that is done by checking your cyber resilience you cannot do it without you cannot just say yeah you know we, we will we will believe them all it's uh, it's a proven wrong method when you look at what happened in the past years so, so that will be my biggest, biggest advice to everybody. Have a very, very good testing program and make, make sure that you know for sure. Definitely. Thank you, Joseph. Uh, Yori, what are some of the primary improvements that you've seen from leveraging uh, cyber automation techniques and what impact has, the de has deployment of these kinds of tools had on your organization? I mean, maybe you touched on it a little bit already, but um, maybe you can expand a bit for us. Yeah, and I, and I would like to, to use, well, it's a pretty simple answer. I would like to use two, two examples. Um, one, what, what Joseph also touched, touched before, um, is looking, looking at our own um, cloud environment yeah, as, as Gtronics. 
Um, not trying to sell anything here, but just working with as best practices. Um, what what we've did, what we've done, yeah. So we've ensured that we've we've set up, configured everything in a secure way, as as our mantra is secure, secure by design. Um, however, we needed the requirement to test. Yeah, exactly what 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 Joseph just was saying. So so that was that was really key in one the delivery and future deliveries, which we'll still be doing, and of course making sure that that um, we can review in detail um, together with with, with Joseph teams or, or with the Comsoft team and Hub, um, so that it really gets. Tested and, and we really have have you know then a, a clear a clear view and, and a clear answer on what is our status did, did, did we miss anything yeah what we what do we need to what do we need to focus on so that's one that's one example um, another example is more looking at incident response yeah because if you if you look in the past right in, incident response for example, from detection to, to really handling handling the, the issue, um, it could, let's say, it, it could take 10 minutes. Yeah, I'm just um, giving an example. Now with, with, the right, with the right automation in place, it moves you to seconds. And, and that is really, that is really a, a powerful impact because, you know, if you get attacked or if you get, you know, if you're attacked by ransomware, for example, Time, time is key. Yeah. Um, so you don't you don't want to have a delayed response. You don't want to have different processes overlapping or processes working against each other at some point maybe. But you really want to have an automated process. Yeah. Where, where you can just say, okay, you know, if X happens, we go into this stream, and it brings you a, a much greater degree of, of consistency response time, incident response time. And, and I think as well, with that consistency, you can be sure that an automated process works in the same way every time. Yeah, yes, it will have to be fine-tuned, of course, with everything you have fine-tuned, but, but it works much more in a controlled process than, than you would have a human dealing with it. Um, and that's that's what that's that's also quite quite an impact because um, with this automation you you have a straight process while with a human there there's always interpretation and those kind of things which is also needed don't get me wrong but to a much to a much lesser lesser extent yeah um, so even simple things as well um, automatically opening tickets yeah. It's it's everybody knows this, right? Everybody's working with, you know, resolving some cases or or, or using tickets and so on, um, without doing that manually, automated, yeah, automated from our to, from the SOC directly, put the automation in place, and it saves you time. It saves you this this labor. So, with those examples, just wanted wanted to highlight this a uh, few of uh, you know key benefits and and the impact actually that that uh, we've seen. Great, thank you, Yuri. And I really want to get to Q&A because we're about an hour in uh, to our discussion. I think we covered a lot of ground, um, but we've gotten many questions um, that I would like to ask you. And I'll just end off with a final question to Rob. Rob, do you have any other piece of advice um, that you can give to CISOs um, uh, regarding um, approach and implementation? Yes, thank you. I will keep it short so we have enough time for the, for the questions. But what I would like to give as advice, don't forget your security 101 your people, your process technology. Don't turn people into technology and don't turn technology into people. And so don't make, make sure that your people are engaged. As I said before, uh, they don't have to do the repetitive work. Automate that, but also make sure that you use the people where you really need it. The, one of the things that I found whilst working with automation is that you often might lose yourself in like the big promise, the silver bullet, so to say, this is going to solve all your problems. Make sure that you keep in mind where you really need uh, people. Um, I can give you maybe a small example. I will not uh, go too much into time, uh, just uh, a small example. When we started uh, automating, for instance, uh, inventory processes, asset inventory processes, when you do the IT environment, it might perfectly work. And you go to an OT environment, 
all of a sudden you see uh, lights blinking or gates opening up and closing down because that environment is so much different than an IT environment. So always keep your head there, make sure that you have uh, uh, experienced people uh, knowing what they do and, and uh, make sure that, uh, yeah, that, that you do the right thing and not follow the silver bullet uh, promises. Per se. That's my last piece of advice. Thank you, Rob. So before we head into Q&A, for anyone asking, and we've gotten a few of these questions, where can you find this session later? Um, you can find it on Hub Security's YouTube channel. Um, it will be uploaded there. Um, we're also streaming live, I believe, on LinkedIn. So uh, if you want to share this session with anybody, um, feel free to do that. And um, within a couple of days following the event, you'll also get an email um, with a link, which will um, give you access directly to the content. So um, I'd like to start our Q&A session now. And we have so many questions. I don't uh, even know where to begin. Um, just in terms of format for our panelists, um, I'm going to throw a question out there. If there's a, a specific one you want to be asked, you can see some in the doc. I've put them there. Um, and you can highlight them. But um, feel free to jump in, to respond, and to uh, engage openly uh, also between, uh, between yourself. And I'm going to start off with um, um, one of our attendees, um, which is um, related to related to hardware. Um, so Tim was asking, how do you deal with all the different endpoints which are connected to company networks such as MacBooks, laptops, desktop, mobile? Does anyone want to start us off? Um, I can I can take that one, and then anybody else can jump in, of course. Um, I guess the question is, how do you deal with it from, from a security perspective? And, and I think you, as a, as a CISO, if, if, if you look at that, or security manager, right? Um, if you look at that, you need to ask yourself first, what do you want to protect? Yeah. Do you want to protect the device as being a device? and Or do you want to protect the data? And I think that's already two key questions you need to ask yourself, or you want to protect both, right? However, you know, we're living in, in a bring your own device world. So maybe the device is not yours and you don't need to protect the device, but you only need to protect the data. So I think that is already a key question you need to answer first. When that is, when that is answered, um, I think depending on the answer or you look at, a certain um, mobile device management solution or and I say or and yeah you, you look at you look at a certain solution to to make sure that all the data you store on those devices is is, is encrypted and protected in the right way and is also encrypted in transit and so on and so on. So that 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 would be my my take yeah go back um, and, and think about it. What do you what do you want to the device or the data and then build up build up from there? Yeah. Roth is asking, would you share the best? Yeah, did someone else want to jump in? Yeah, maybe to add to that, just to show, and, and I really like your answer, Yuri. And I think you also have to think about what is it you want to secure. Do you want to secure everything? Think about really what is the data that is really important. I think I like that very much, Yuri, Absolutely. because I also see yeah, that's, uh, that's I think the most important thing. Yeah, also to, to, add, to, add, to add to that, Rob and Yuri. Um, there's a rise of secure computing on the way now. And this, this exactly looked at this issue. When, when you look at the normal standard networks, the normal devices that, that, that everybody was using, and now how we are turning into this, this completely upside down world where everybody takes their own IoT edge computing, there, there needs to be a different approach to that specific question. What are we protecting? We are protecting the data at rest, in use, and in transit, that's it. And if you put a, a, a real good architectural approach to that, it doesn't really matter anymore what device it is, what it sits. And, and this, is, this is really uh, the more strategic, more, um, I think more disruptive question, I would say, towards today's uh, cyber strategy and cyber designs um, and architecture that we see in, in companies towards what we need to be looking at in future. I think that's a very good point you two raised. Thank you. Uh, maybe to add to that, it becomes more and more important. We get more and more data, not, not even from a security perspective, but look at the economic uh, uh, things about it as well. Data costs money. So yeah. being able to know exactly what you need to secure is going to be uh, also very much efficient in the future. So uh, 
data classification is becoming more important than ever. It's it's like that topic that you do not want to touch. Yeah? As we, I'm looking at myself as a CISO. Oh, data classification. I have to teach the whole organization how to have to classify data. It's like this big mountain that you're looking up that you have to somehow implement. It's becoming yeah. more important and it's becoming more uh, valuable and, uh, and return for money as well. And I think that's also important. But, but on the other hand, Rob, um, to, to chip on, and, and I know it's not in the question, but to chip in on, on data classification, <laughs> yeah, you can also turn it around and say like, unless it's indicated, you yeah. encrypt and secure everything. Yeah. It's another it's another thinking process, but but can be can be really a good one to yeah have long discussions about. Yeah, that. maybe something for a new way because if I talk to business, they're like, "What have the other way around? Let's keep it yeah, all open, yeah. except as we say, that's really risky." Yeah. But okay, let's let's have that for that's another another uh, session, I think. Yeah. Just to add to your point, I totally another like the question, and I fully agree on that. Um, what you're what you're discussing yeah. here, we are. This is what I mentioned in my first statement. We are moving now from the classical world to protect um, secure networks, uh, going to a zero trust approach defined by the open group. And they are saying you have to be data and asset specific uh, uh, centric uh, security here. This is exactly what you're saying. Encrypt everything, encrypt any transmission. Um, I totally like your idea, Rob, of the operational excellence this is what you mentioned a little bit earlier. So we have concepts for that. We as the security guys, have to accept that we are only a normal player in a big game and that we are not the, yeah, the very specific or special guys anymore. So we play our role in a standard um, company or in the standard process, yeah. Uh, John is asking, one of the panelists mentioned security being an enabler. Does he mean less friction or actually being a genuine enabler? If he means enabler, could they explain what outcomes they are driving within the business? And I don't know who it was that mentioned it, but maybe one of you will remember. Yeah, it was me. Uh, actually, uh, yeah. So um, I mean, let's start with the less friction. Okay, that's uh, uh, that's the basic because uh, we are always we're blamed. I mean, always security were blamed of uh, 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 impacting the business. Okay, or impacting the operation. Uh, people that are trying to. Uh, uh, sub uh, sabotage the, the business. We always uh, uh, used to fight for it uh, because we want to protect the business. Uh, but uh, the business itself, we just they just want one and not necessarily uh, understand uh, what cyber means. And uh, uh, when I say uh, enabler, I think it's also maturity for our business uh, is basically to explain or basically to educate our business owners, uh, the the board members, uh, the top managers, what. Uh, Cybersecurity is and what kind of threat it can uh, uh, it can uh, pose to the organization. Okay, why it can uh, harm the organization eventually, and today I do see much more response from the top management and board uh, uh, directors. They also do a lot of training of how to manage this cyber incident, not only on the technical level of how we pr uh, stop it or and remediate from the incident, but also how we. Uh, communicated to the community with the, our um, uh, media or PR or any other type of uh, communication uh, to the world. Uh, what do we require to um, uh, to report to an authority or a, an entity uh, in the, in the country that operate? Should should I also answer or uh, um, uh, answer or uh, provide information to? Um, uh, to my customers, okay, what, what about what exactly happened to me without disclosing uh, too much sensitive information, and this is something that uh, uh, top management already already dealing with today, and uh, we as enablers, okay, we just uh, there we are uh, when it it is happening, uh, we are standing next to them, helping them to to answer the right questions, and of course, train them uh, before it is happening uh, to make sure that they are. Uh, um, uh, they are. Um, uh, they will know uh, how to how to manage uh, uh, this incident uh, once once it happens. So basically, uh, awareness. Um, Sam is asking if I have SOAR tools or, or SOAR tools, can I get rid of CM software? Um, no. Uh, <laughs> um, in my opinion, they go they go hand in hand. Um, so yeah, basically, yeah, my view no. 
um, it, it helps it helps um, with alerts coming in it helps to automate processes um, but it will not it's not the replacement for your sim not in not in my view simple yeah. answer but as a follow up yeah well i will let you yeah, go ahead. I, I just uh, basically with the socket security operations uh, uh, center sim at security information and event management uh, eventually, what as part of your uh, scene, you would like to have uh, all the logs, all the information that was gathered. Uh, um, and once there is an incident, you just not only uh, make the right response with SOAR, okay, so basically you don't close the firewall or do something, but you also want to have this information to find the tracks of uh, how uh, your intrusion or this incident actually happened. It's A. B, you also want to perform uh, threat hunting uh, activities. It's kind of proactive uh, way to uh, monitor your, uh, uh, your network, or your environment. So basically to look at your logs, uh, your information, if there's something uh, uh, odd happening that maybe it's a, I, I have a, a malicious entity inside my network. So basically same uh, sword, they have to live together side by side. Uh, I don't see how, how sword can uh, replacing okay thanks and um, thanks for that um broth is asking uh, would you guys mind sharing some of the best practices and implementation of soar to enhance soc capabilities by practically enabling security automation and response i think there um briefly i think we we already touched a lot of a, a lot of these right um i think throughout throughout the conversation um, I think enhancing there is, is really the, 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 the key bit, right? Enhancing and, and improving. Um, you know, things I, I said around, um, you know, incident response types, yeah, is, 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 I think is, is, is really, is really um, adding a lot of, a lot of um, yeah, benefit to that. Um, I think what, what Rob said as well, that also plays in, in, in that area, yeah? Um, Meaning that, yeah, you use your people um, effectively, right? Don't turn, turn your people into machines or the other way around. Or, or I think those are the key things. Um, now, going really into detail on, 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 on this question, I think, yeah, that would keep us busy for another hour, probably. Um, but yeah, I think most key things uh, we already touched touched on um, otherwise please please reach out and, and we'll, ha we'll be happy to go more in depth on this one i just want to mention the, definitely on top of uh, yours mm -hmm. uh, 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 one of the practices that we usually do with the many of our customers is called uh, um, purple teaming okay which is uh, actually designed to uh, enhance your SOC and SOAR capabilities eventually uh, which is uh, conducting uh, a red team activity which is attacking the organization while uh, the SOC representatives, they're watching the all the alerts to see if something bells, okay? If uh, uh, we were able to uh, create, make an attack and nothing was, uh, uh, nothing bell, uh, we together with this uh, blue teamers uh, or the SOC analysts, uh, we're going to see why it was not, uh, uh, it, it was not triggered, nothing was triggered. Maybe we don't have the right log or maybe we don't have uh, uh, the right rule Okay, and if there is no sensor that will uh, trigger it, then we will uh, uh, together we will define how to create it. And if there is no rule, we will make this rule a new rule. And this is kind of an ongoing activity uh, that we all, all use together. So this is the I would say once you have operating SOC, you have to do these kind of activities. Um, Sergey, I've got two questions here for you. Um, Mr. Wilcox is asking, what are the advantages and disadvantages of cyber automation? within today's global economy. And as a follow-up, how can we use cyber automation to prevent or solve uh, economic crises? Okay, so I'm not sure that uh, uh, the cyber automation can uh, prevent or solve the economic crisis, okay? But uh, because it's a, it's a cyber, eventually it's a cyber, it's a enabler for the economy, but it's not uh, the driver of the economy. Uh, but uh, advantage and disadvantage, but by the way, they are, there are disadvantages also in the in implementation of, uh, uh, of uh, cyber automations. Uh, 
uh, myself, uh, before I became an expert in what I'm doing, actually I had to perform a lot of security reviews, a lot of penetration tests, a lot of uh, just doing a hands-on activity to understand exactly bit uh, by bit how everything is working. Uh, today, or uh, with cyber automation, people, uh, it, it becomes much harder to understand what actually happens uh, under the hood. Ask the, uh, just a, a programmer, uh, someone who writes uh, programs, uh, applications, they don't know necessarily how assembly looks like, how the machine, uh, how the machine uh, uh, interprets interprets the uh, the commands. Okay, they don't. By the way, they don't need, but uh, uh, they can uh, produce their applications. But they don't. If something severe is happening, they they cannot go under the hood and uh, and solve this issue. So the same situation or disadvantage uh, can happen with cyber automation. So that's why the education, cyber education, it has to go side by side with uh, cyber automation. Okay, we, uh, to fill the gap of uh, um, of experience that cannot be gathered because of the automation, we have to educate at least to provide this theoretical information to be available. So as soon it's uh, uh, something happen and you need this knowledge, it will be available on demand for your uh, for your convenience. That's a disadvantage, but the advantage is huge. Okay, advantage uh, uh, also for a global economy. It means that the entry point uh, to start doing, uh, uh, running a business in a secure way uh, from day one, okay, if it's a small business or bigger business, okay, it's much cheaper than it used to be in the past. In the past, uh, only enterprises had the luxury to, uh, to have a cybersecurity. Today with the automation, uh, the, uh, basically every startup, every uh, shop, can enjoy for, for enterprise grade or, or almost enterprise grade uh, uh, security level and, and cyber, with cyber automation. So basically, uh, uh, I mean, it's the fact is this is the future, okay? Uh, it has advantages and disadvantages. We have to be just aware about it. I wanted to just, because um, we have about a little less than 10 minutes here and I wanted to just talk about uh, for a second, um, to quote Rob People, um, we're getting questions here um, about uh, working in the cybersecurity workforce. And we've discussed already um, how there's a, a big demand for, for experts and especially niche experts in specific fields. Um, and um, one of the um, audience members is asking, um, should I be more focused on learning uh, about OSINT, OSINT, or automation within the cyber field. Another one is asking, um, how can I extend, you know, cyber education beyond uh, my team to, let's say, non-employees or non-specialized employees within the department? Um, do you guys have any advice um, for people who are looking to, to get deeper into um, cybersecurity automation specifically or within the cybersecurity workforce generally? Yeah, I, sorry, I, I can I can comment what, what I'm doing myself. So when when I'm, for instance, hiring people on my own team, I'm not always hiring security or people with a security background, uh, because as I said, it's virtually impossible to find uh, people, uh, and it's also <laughs> very hard to keep them. Um, so what I do more and more is just hire people, train them myself. Uh, of course, with a certain expertise, but it's just like in, uh, if you do, do want to do awareness uh, programs, hire somebody with a communication background. If you want to do uh, on architecture, make sure you have somebody with an architecture background. But but try to fill in also within yourself. Train people, uh, give them uh, um, yeah, a career ahead, and at this moment that, that's that's working for me. And uh, that's a tip that I can give you. Yeah, I, I would I would like to add in to, with, with Rob as well. Um, I think similar. Um, however, if you if you're just if you're just starting off, like you want to start your career in, in, in cyber, for example, um, I think it's, it's really key to kind of have, have a more broader knowledge on, on IT, right? Just, just look at the wide, the wide area, yeah? Um, I, think, I think that is, that is one, one, and then, then start to focus in on, and, and you can work with this, right? Um, I think, as, as, as we do, right? You can focus on, on several areas, like one year or two years on one niche, let's say, then two years on something else. But doing that, you, you really grow, yeah? 
um, and, and that's that's really key. Um, one other thing is is as well what what I also see as as, as a benefit, and and um, I think if, if my other colleagues are watching this from other business units, they they might be less happy. But also look at at, at people you already have. Um, I think there's always people with, for example, within within IT who are, who are have a more interest. In, in, into cyber, right? So might be somebody from finance or, or even HR or legal, yeah? just, just giving some examples. Um, and they, they often also have, have their background, but they can also give you um, a different a different view on things. And that's really interesting. Oh. Um, so, so I think, yes, you, you need to grow your people. You need to look at si outside because yeah, of, of hiring. But also look 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 insight into your organization where where people can can help and and I think that can be really valuable because I really had personally some some really good experience and, and examples with that with with some of my team members so I can really recommend that as well. So um, to to complete the round here, from my perspective, if I hire people, I especially look on the capabilities in the area of the management systems, uh, that they know the processes, so they know what an audit is, what to do with findings and so on, that um, the, the specialized IT knowledge is becoming more and more uh, less important um, because of the stronger move to the cloud. We have a clear cloud first strategy. With this, we give the expertise to companies like Comsec. And this also affects not only the IT services, the classical ones, but also the security services. So Comsec has a specialist or hub security, sorry for that. Uh, hub security has a specialist and uh, we have to manage them. So I need guys who are capable of, um, of knowing or knowing what a management system is, auditing them and all the stuff, what, what happens uh, or what, what belongs to that. I see that there are Thank you. And, and um, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, I think we actually have to wrap up because some, okay. of, you, some of you need to jump off soon. Um, but this was a really great se session. And thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Thank you to our speakers, Sergey Penchuk, Peter Zimmer, um, Rob Reinders, and Yori Barbier. Oh, I miss Joseph, Joseph Soren as well. Um, we hope that you're all staying safe and healthy. And we look forward to hosting many more discussions like these. Um, so thank you so much again for joining. We hope to see you um, at future events. And uh, just know to get in touch with today's panelists, um, you can re reach out to them directly. Um, all of today's attendees will be receiving an email in the coming days um, with the contact information of each of our panelists. Uh, so don't be afraid to drop them a line uh, if you have any further questions on any of today's topics that we covered. And um, to stay up to date on upcoming webinars, you can follow Hub Security on LinkedIn. Uh, we're also on Twitter. And you can also check out our weekly digest on Medium for the latest stories coming out of the cyber and security sphere. Um, again, thank you so much to our panelists and uh, thank you to our audience for joining. Um, you'll be able to find a recording of our session today uh, up on Hub Security's YouTube channel within the coming days. And um, we hope very much that you'll join us again uh, in one of our upcoming events. Thank you everyone and um, see you next time.